In the beginning, God created heaven and the earth and all that therein is. And the wisdom of the Almighty, he put man in dominion of all he has created. Some men discover purpose and live thereby, while some fell by the wayside. One of such men of valor who discover their purpose in life and destiny and live accordingly is John Ajo or Ladapo, who was born on Wednesday, January 5, 1972, to the Oladapo family dynasty in Igbotako Osoro in Okitumpa local government area of Ondo State. Just like it was recorded about Jesus, John Ayo Oladapo also grew in wisdom and favor with God and man. He is a product of a relationship that traversed generations of great men and women. Dr. Ayo Oladapo. Ojiwa <laughs> Timobalosi <laughs> The Igbo Takuborn John Ayo Oladapo had his elementary education and secondary education in both Igbo Taku and Akure, the endorsed capital. These spanned from local authority primary school at Gwitu Village, Igbo Taku, between 1978 and 1971. Baptist Day Primary School, Igbo Taku, between 1981 and 1984. Igbo Taku Community Grammar School, Igbo Taku, between 1985 and 1990. And Prospect High School, Akure. I know Eben uh, Ayoladapo as one of the old students of uh, Community Grammar School, Igbo Taku. And uh, for the little time I know him, he has been supportive. And in uh, the last inauguration that was done, he was so active, he contributed immensely to the success of the program. And uh, apart from that, uh, from uh, information I gather from people outside and in the community, he has been uh, above board, uh, responsible, dependable, uh, disciplined, tolerant, and somebody is somebody that uh, somebody can depend upon. Uh, if I am to say, at least I have known him right away when we were in the university. We were together in the Indo State University. I don't know if it is now it is State University in the same department. We are in the same department at this religious studies. Uh, while we were in school, we see him as a perfect gentleman. I use that language, that adjective, a perfect gentleman. Because barely do you know whether this man is a reverend. For later, we got to know that he was a reverend. Baptist, uh, the Baptist uh, church. Each time we have problem when we were in the university, we sought for his help. He gave us a very wise counsel. Uh, back here is the coordinator, one of the coordinators that usher in the first executive of the old student association of this noble institution. To us here, I mean to us in community grammar school, but as, as a school, we believe in him. His insatiable quest for knowledge led him to the University of Adwekete, now at the State University and the University of Ibadan for higher degrees. He furthered his education at the Nigerian Baptist Theological Seminary of Gomosho for Masters in Divinity and also a Master's degree in Arts from the University of Ibadan before bagging a Doctor of Philosophy PhD in Christian Ethics at the Nigerian Baptist Theological Seminary, Ogumosho. I 
have to thank God for all he has done, keeping me, ordering my steps. I see God, life, ordering my steps. God teaching me, telling me what to do at every stage in life. And that is what has kept me going to this present uh, uh, moment. I want to appreciate God in the life of my parents who instill in us and the, the fear of God. I, I, I learned a lot of things from my father who practically instilled fear of God in us and uh, pays special attention to us in loving the Lord, serving the Lord, and uh, doing things in the way of the Lord. Today, I attribute all that I've been to God and especially to my father who instilled discipline in me. What is that? I'm a daddy. 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 I'm a school I grew up to know my father being secretary, chairman, president of many organizations and uh, serving in different capacities. Anywhere he finds himself, he is always one of those who are giving the pace, leading such organizations. And when I was growing up too, and I begin to see this trait in me, anywhere I get to, people ask me to do this, do that. Uh, I can't, this to my uh, hands, uh, commit this to my hands, ask me to do this, ask me to do that. I learned a lot of him from that man. I learned uh, keeping record, paying attention to details, and uh, being faithful in any assignment you are asked to do. Because he kept on saying every time that uh, whatsoever you are asked to do, be faithful to God and be faithful to that organization that has assigned you to do whatever you are doing. And today, I see that helping me as one of the major uh, things uh, that I see that has been keeping me going. It is safe to say that God's grace, mercy, anointing, coupled with education, serve as catalysts to the growth of John Ayo Ladakwa, spiritually, ministerially, administratively, and in the facets of life. He became the president on the State Baptist Conference in 2010 and held the position till the year 2020. I know Reverend Dr. Ayola Dako to be a Christian and not just an ordinary Christian but a fervent and committed Christian and uh, no wonder this quality has brought him so far. This quality has placed him in position of responsibility to the point that while he was coming into the office of the conference president then in 2010 some of us were bold enough to recommend him for that leadership position because we know him to possess some uh, leadership uh, quality during his time he has been able to raise on those state Baptist conference to an enviable status. We know Dr. Ayala to be a leader and a cool-headed leader. We, I know him to be a fortright man, a, an open-minded man, somebody who is very open, who speaks his mind. Before I round up, let me quickly say, I took over this position from him. I took over this position of leadership the leadership of Ondo State Baptist Conference from him. And it was each free. There was no any trouble, no problem. And the relationship is still very smooth uh, compared to in other organizations where the predecessor and the successors 
their enemies. I first met Reverend Dr. John Ayola Dagbo in 1993, where he reported at First Baptist Church at Kure as a fresh pastor coming from Baptist College of Theology, Oyo. Uh, he came to serve as associate to Reverend Abayo, late Reverend Abayo Miyajibi. Months after he landed, I believe Reverend Ajibi identified the evangelistic trait in Reverend John Ayolada. And um, for that reason, Reverend Abayo Miyajibi allowed him to blossom in the evangelism area by making him the church evangelism pastor. He was only 22 years old then, but God used him mightily. Within a couple of years of becoming the evangelism minister, God had used him to plant not less than five churches within Akure. The things that impressed me most about Reverend Dr. John Ayoladapo are one, his doggedness. He doesn't allow anything to distract him. Once he's determined to do something, he goes ahead to do it. So I just pray that our younger ones will borrow a leaf from him, learn from his doggedness, learn from his focus on God. Reverend Dr. John Ayoladapo knew his God early in life. He was focused on his God and God has strengthened him to do exploits. We are all witnesses to some of the exploits God used him to do. He became the first full-time conference secretary. He was the first to move into the residence even though it was half completed then. God used him to establish many churches. God used him to become the first Baptist minister in Ondo State to become Khan president. And he also became the chairman, Christian Association of Nigeria, Ondo State in 2016, a position he holds till date. I want to really thank God who graciously allowed uh, me to cross the path of Reverend Dr. Ayo Oladapo, Ondo State Christian Association Chairman. This man, when he came on board newly, he did something that uh, was that I could describe as ex an exceptional display of wisdom. The first things he did, I wouldn't know what he had heard about the prayer altar, but the first thing he did was to seek you see for the spiritual support of the altar he went to the extent of bringing the entire esco for prayers and he quickly adopted the altar as the prayer arm of Khan. so whenever there is any emergency whenever there are issues you know to be tackled in the place of prayer he will quickly beckon on us as for his leadership I, I have always said it anywhere that, um, you know, since the inception of Khan in you know, those stage, I have been privileged to work with all of the leaders. You see, some not at a very close, you know, range, but I think uh, even as an, a keen observer of uh, events, you see, aside Baba Bonigi, I mean, who started Khan in you know, those stage, one leader that has come on board who have displayed exceptional wisdom, great intelligence, sound sense of judgment is Reverend Dr. Ayo Oladapo. I'm always amazed the way he handles complex and intricate issues. You see, anytime, you know, they arise. So, uh, for me, Reverend Ayo Oladapo, brought dynamism, activism, and purposefulness to the leadership of Khan in Ondo State. I mean, he, he, during his time, you see, Khan really came alive. In every nook and cranny of Ondo State, 
you will know that can exist in Ondo State. Reverend Dr. Ayola Dapo is somebody I respect so much. One is a super administrator and is a cool-headed man and is a man of his words. Even well lettered, apart from the educational background of his calling, is somebody I can beat my chest for anytime, any moment, anywhere, any day. To me, is a is a gentle, a complete gentle man. And when it comes to his calling, is a very superman, especially in teaching the word of the Lord. Let be Odun Mefa. The fact that we are Otolo da poje n ti ko maropa o de fe otito o ma nfe otito o ma nwa awon to hun le gbekele to je olotito eyan lati lo ohun lo je ko make success lori kan akaye awon kan shaman to ti je oni number pe agoko ti won eru pe bi a se lojo ori to I bought your recent segbe kan a tu won leyin a wa pelu won a ye ri fun kokon ta ma soro teri ba gbogbo eyan lo teri ba fun gbogbo eyan apart from being a well sought after preacher of the gospel reverend dr john ayo ladapo is also a prolific writer with special bias for marriage and family life hence the establishment of the center a blissful home initiative with testimonies of impacts on homes and marriages. My husband, Reverend Dr. John Ayoladapo, has been a very loving husband since the time we started the journey. He has been a man of the people. Even right from that time, everybody would have loved to come around him. He's a prayer warrior and so you will see people going to him for prayers. I want to appreciate God because since we have come together, I have never regretted coming in contact with him. He is a frank man. He's a man that speaks his mind. He doesn't hide his feelings. And so at times, one, one may feel he is a tough person. But I thank God that he has never been an hypocrite. He, he speaks what is in his mind, he makes you to know what he likes and what he doesn't like. He has been a very nice husband, a caring one. He loves his family so dearly. To the extent that if he is traveling and he tells you he's going for, it for three days, just ex expect him after the second day, expect him on the second day because he likes coming home on time doesn't like staying too far from the family. So he's a very loving husband who knows his responsibilities and uh, who takes up his responsibilities and performs the necessary duties as a good father, as a good husband, and as a good friend. He's my friend, he's my confidant. I confide in, in him in many of my issues, in all my issues, and he gives me advice on what to do. And at times when I give him my own advice to, he takes to advice. Very accommodating, he's very loving. He treats my, my, my parents like his own parents. My sisters and brothers like his, his own brothers and his sisters. And so he's a loving person and everybody loves to be around him. My dad is a wonderful personality. Um, he's a person who so much cherishes his children. Um, the particular thing that amazes me about him is that he's a father to all girls, like as you can see, all girls. But he hasn't for once made make it obvious that uh, I give birth to all girls and like make us look as if we are worthless sort of us. The Yoruba culture always upholds um, girl children as not being worthwhile, but he has 
is, is, a, is a person who has so much invested in us and wants the best out of us. So he, he hasn't for once looked down on us that oh, I gave back to all girls. What would they turn out to be? What would what would they what would be their outcome? But so much believes in us, believes in our dreams, and he has always been supportive. My dad's a discipline area. He knows how to play with his children and at the same time how to discipline them whenever they do. Whenever they do something wrong. My dad, he is a man that sets examples for people to follow. He's someone that I would love to follow his examples that he has laid down. My dad is a loving man. He's so kind to his children and wife. He loves us all and does anything we want. There's one thing that inspires me most about daddy. He did not look at his background. He did not allow his background to actually, because it was coming from a very local area, a very, very local area. And looking to what he has attained now, is actually a very determined man. Because for someone to get to where he is now, it's just it's God's grace and determination. So I've learned that from him, that your determination is what matters the most. And putting God first is what matters the most. He's a man that does not allow laziness. He's a man that invests a lot. Invests a lot. The years in the life of a man are not as important as the life in those years. For Reverend Dr. John Ayo Nadapo, it's been 50 years of God's grace and mercy. And he says, to God be the glory. I've seen God really practically God has been so good, God has been so faithful, God has been so uh, encouraging in all my ways. I cannot but give God the glory for 2050. I say thank you, Lord, for giving me the grace. And I believe that uh, the next 50, you, the Lord will still sustain me and uh, give me a, a greater platform to serve him, to do things that belongs to him. My wife has been my pillar in all areas of life. I must especially thank her for standing by me. She's my chief editor and uh, she looks e into every of my writings and uh, criticizes me a lot when I need to put dots in here, I need to put comma here, I need to do this, I need to do that. So I must be grateful to her for giving me support in the ministry, uh, supporting me in all areas of life and uh, giving me an environment to thrive. I must especially appreciate all those God has used at one time or another to mentor me, to breathe on me, to guide me. I will not forget at this moment, Reverend John Emma Abromare, the former uh, conference secretary of Bende Baptist Conference, who was at the time uh, our director of academic affairs when I was in the uh, training in the pastor school. He believed so much in me, even when some people did not believe in me as a young boy then, because I entered into this uh, seminary training at quite a younger age. He picked me up, gave me several assignments, gave me several uh, things to do, disciple me in one way or the other. Every now and then, almost every day, he will give me at least several chapters of the scripture to read, and I must write exam on all those chapters. And looking at my performances, he looked back one day and said, I see you as one of our leaders in years to come. That don't relent, keep it up. And each time I look back today and I remember that prophecy he made there, I cannot but give thanks to God and appreciate Reverend John Ema Amromare. I must also appreciate Reverend uh, Abayomi Ajegbe. He taught me the act of uh, leadership, the act of uh, uh, discipline in leadership. I served with him from 1993, my first pastoral, full-time pastoral assignment after the 91-92 training. Uh, I served with him and in him I could see dedication, commitment and uh, he exposed me to a lot of administrative uh, procedure and which is still keeping me going today. I must appreciate God for his life and uh, the man who baptized me and through whom a message I became. I, a Christian, Reverend Dr. Emmons Omori Shemi, did a lot in my life too. This is another man that picked me practically from a cradle and a watch over me. And I thank God today he's still living. 
Baba is still kicking and uh, he's still doing well to the glory of God. Another boy was a member, one of the members of Ibotako Baptist Church. This time I went there to give lecture, there to minister in that church. During my menstruation, he was because he became a Christian. And then he developed very good. And then uh, it's one of those 15 Christians who were baptized. And since that time, he has been performing well. I knew him very well, uh, very honest, obedient, and then a uh, hard-working person. He was the one who made arrangements for the conference to have a land where we have as a millennium city now. He's a man who is not afraid. When other people are afraid of the task ahead, he's not afraid at all. He worked hard. At 50, I look back and I must give God the glory. I must return all glory unto him. At this moment, I must appreciate him for all that he has done in my life. To God be that glory, great things he has done. You're amazing, dear Lord. You are amazing, dear Lord. You're amazing, dear Lord. You are amazing, dear Lord. You amaze me, dear Lord. You amaze me, dear Lord. You are amazing, dear Lord. You're amazing.